Good morning, everyone. So today's video will be a little bit different. I recently found a few MLMs I wasn't familiar with, ones I hadn't heard of before, so I thought I'd go into a little bit of detail about the worst of the most recent ones that I've seen, and that's Neora. From what I've seen, I do believe they went by a different name before called Nerium, and then changed it. This company, the FTC, has actually declared as a pyramid scheme, and they do promote all about building your so-called business rather than actually promoting the product. I've seen a couple local distributor ads, which is what alerted me to these. My original plan was to talk about three different ones, but Neora took quite a bit of time, so it's just Neora today. So what is Neora? Neora is a skincare company that even proudly presents itself as being part of the Direct Selling Association. So they are a multi-level marketing company. So they have skincare, hair care, wellness, and various sets of their products. The main thing that they seem to advertise, age-defying skincare, which they do post some before and after images. As you can see, there's several examples from their own website here for their before and after, and some of them it's very, very clear that they have filters on. As you can see, everything is just lighter and more blurred. And then there's even some where all the freckles are blurred out, most of them are gone. Why would you even want to get rid of the freckles like that. They are really pushing the too good to be true results narrative here. So when we go to look into finding out what it is and how it is they're getting their results, this is what we find. Imagine age fighters that actually win. Your age doesn't have to define you. Look and feel your best with Neora's transformative line of age fighting skincare and wellness products. See the difference? Transform your skincare routine with our unique science-based products that target all major signs of aging and under Lying causes and feel the difference. Take your health to the next level with our wellness products that keep you looking and feeling healthy inside and out. Neora is headquartered in Addison, Texas, and it's a global relationship marketing company offering breakthrough proprietary age fighting skin care and wellness products. They claim they are validated by years of scientific research and that their product line incorporates exclusive ingredients designed and proven, which you can never really say the word word proven amongst the scientific community, it's always shown, never proven, to deliver visible results. The demand for our products coupled with our tools, support, and unrivaled expertise enable Neora to offer an incomparable opportunity to build successful business on your terms. And there you go, they just kind of glaze over the products again and go straight into having your own business with them even though you're nothing more than a contracted employee as we know from every other MLM out there. But they launched in August 2011 with the mission to make people better and achieved record-breaking sales and industry accolades, attracting millions of fans who love their products and the real results, and help thousands of people build businesses that set them on course to live their dreams. When you see this, they really want you to think, hey, come join us, not so much, hey, come try our products. And as we know, multi-level marketing companies focus on this as in order to make money, you have to build a downline. Today's the day to make a difference. Neora is committed to positively impacting as many lives as possible. Our worldwide team of Neora brand partners and employees understand the power our actions have to help people enjoy a happier and healthier quality of life. Imagine believing in the mission, our mission to make people better goes far beyond our best-selling age-fighting products and life-changing opportunity. We know the success includes actively practicing gratitude by giving back to our communities and improving the lives of our neighbors who live there. Imagine making people better. The Neora culture is built around 10 core values that stand at the heart of our business. We believe implementing these values into daily business decisions and practices helps guide and keep us on the path to success. Imagine succeeding with the best. Neora team is composed of highly experienced and motivated professionals passionate about a conscious approach to building successful businesses and living fulfilling happier lives. So as you see they really want to make some serious claims here. So I went looking into what their 10 core values are and it is your typical 
MLM stuff. Imagine knowing what you stand for. Nyora's 10 governing principles are designed to help you lead your most fulfilling life while guiding your business and community down a path of excellence. And here are their principles. A lot of these you will recognize from a lot of Hunbots and MLMers that you see in other videos, like the reaction videos, deep dive videos, and even just on the anti-MLM subreddits. One, be real. Our mantra is real. Getting real, being real, and creating real change. Two, be determined. It's important to stay the course. Obstacles are only opportunities in disguise. Three, create a positive team and family atmosphere. A positive spirit spirit is a valuable asset we aspire to use every day for Niora, the family who plays together stays together defines our way of life and you can see right near the top of their list is for creating a team so far this is the third one and there's been nothing about selling the products yet and i think my husband just got home four dream big and act on it daily dreams consist of many smaller goals that can be acted on daily five embrace drive and change change is necessary for growth as a business and as a person we always seek new ways to grow and improve six encourage an entrepreneurial spirit believe in your dreams enough to get outside your comfort zone live life on your own terms this is huge standard MLM promises that you know are never going to happen and you can see right here that the company themselves is encouraging their business partners brand partners to go on with this when most actually are getting in trouble for trying to say stuff like this now seven have fun and help others to have fun Nyora is composed of real people with a can-do attitude who want to create real change having fun helps work not feel like work which makes us more productive. Eight, practice servant leadership. That's a new one. The best leaders are givers, not takers. We help each other and provide selfless service. Nine, pursue constant development of self. No matter how successful one might be, there's always room for improvement. That is standard, especially in ones like Beachbody, you always hear about the self-development. It's huge in their communities. Ten, slow down to go fast. Haste makes waste, get the job done right the first time and if you look in their guidelines there there's absolutely nothing about the products nothing about learning about the products enjoying the products promoting the products and getting others to try the products harley quiet it is purely about team building and self-development you would think that if they were an actual legitimate business they would have something in here in their 10 core principles to encourage people to learn about the products and to try them and everything not just simply build a team as with any mlm out there Nyora does have these starter kits and they have higher priced ones like their cheapest is 199 dollars as we learned with monat recently they have stated that they have one that is $100 even though none of their distributors recommend getting it just because of the fact that the FTC tells them that they have to have something under $100 for a starter kit. And again, we see that Niora ignores that. Their cheapest is $199 and it goes up to $1,150. And on each of these, they're claiming that you're saving more money than what you're spending. I doubt that just because of the fact that we know these companies have really high markup rates. So chances are that the price you're paying is still marked up from what it normally would be to produce it and do some distribution on them. They have two at $199, one is skincare only and one is wellness only, and then they have a $550 one which has skincare, wellness, and hair care, and a $1,150 one which is skincare, wellness, and hair care. And the main thing you'll notice is that the quantity of the products in each of them increases as in have your standard products that seem to be in all of them but where you might get one of them in the 199 dollar bundle you're getting up to three or four in the 1150 dollar bundle what you see here so one it is a business in a box launch your business from home and start thriving as quickly as possible everything required to bring exclusive in demand proven products to the market is here neatly organized and ready to use. 2. A globally accessible personalized e-commerce website. We create and host a customized website for every brand partner to market their business, sell their products, and grow their team across the world. 
Three, marketing materials. To give you the advantage in marketing your business, you'll find engaging, easy to understand documents and marketing materials like product brochures, planners, and applications. Featuring the best of our knowledge and expertise, they eliminate the guesswork and minimizing learning curves. So I'm guessing if they say applications, that's what they want you to use to try and recruit more people in since their focus is recruitment. Four, digital tools. From our mobile apps to comprehensive reports, Reporting to social media tools, you get access to a wealth of digital marketing resources to help you build a global business from home. Five, 24 7 online training. Flexibility is crucial for many of our brand partners, so we provide 24 7 online access to our training videos and resources. This is something I haven't really seen with other ones. Most of it, it seems to be that your upline has to train the downlines, but here it looks like they actually provide some level of training for everybody who joins. Not that that's still really going to be a good thing as, well, we all know. None of them are going to be properly trained in any of, especially when it comes to the skincare and the wellness products. They'll always try and get people to use them, even if it's something that they shouldn't be using due to skin issues, medications, illnesses, whatever it may be. And then you have six, order fulfillment. Brand partners don't need to have stock and replenish inventory, so you can keep space in the garage for your car or maybe even that company paid luxury vehicle you have your eye on. Our model means customers order from you online. That's the key difference, setting the Niora approach apart from others. You focus on building relationships and earning and leave the storage and order fulfillment functions to us. It's a bit difficult to read here because that actually was on the website like this where you have that overlap, which is quite annoying. And if they actually have a warehouse for all the stock and you don't need to keep any stock, why is it then that they would have a bundle that contains 24 different products, a lot of them in multiples? That, that starter kit is more of a stock building starter kit than anything else. And right here it says that you don't have to do that. So so I'm not really trusting that too much. Seven, customer service. While you'll always want to maintain your customer relationships, you can focus on building your business and let us handle the big questions and problems. Happiness Heroes, our amazing customer service team, provide exceptional service to your customers by phone or email. Your business, your way. Create the life you love with Neora. Enroll as a brand partner for only $20 with our enrollment kit and get exclusive access to product packs that start as low as $199 and provide savings up to 56% off retail. Now you can decide how you want to start your business with our new flexible product pack options focusing on skincare, wellness, or a combination of Neora's innovative age-fighting products. And now it's time to get into the real tea with this company. The FTC alleges Neora, formerly known as Nerium, operates an illegal pyramid scheme. This was from November 4th, 2019. So it's actually already about a year and a half since they have done this. So the FTC has announced a lawsuit against Neora, formerly known as Nerium, that the FTC alleges Neora, an international multi-level marketing company that sells dietary supplements, skin creams, and other products is an illegal pyramid scheme. The FTC also alleges that it deceptively promotes its Nerium EHT dietary supplement by making unproven claims that it's a breakthrough antidote for serious brain diseases. Which as you can see now, likely due to this lawsuit, they have actually changed what they say about this substance. So the details now, EHT is a natural health product developed over 20 years ago, formulated using coffea arabic seed extract, ginkgo biloba, vitamins B6, B12, D, magnesium, selenium, and alpha lipoic acid. So what it does is they're claims are that boost your wellness, memory, and focus with a groundbreaking product that offers to promote better cognitive function, enhance memory, support peripheral circulation, metabolize carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. And these statements have not been evaluated by Health Canada. This is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. I am curious though as to how many distributors still try and claim that it actually does. According to the full lawsuit against them, what they used to say about it is, since early 2015, Nerium has sold Nerium EHT, a supplement whose primary active ingredient, EHT, is provided exclusively to Nerium by Signum. Defendants promote Nerium EHT for brain health, claiming it can prevent, reduce the risk of, or treat concussions or chronic traumatic encephalopathy. 
I can't say that today apparently. CTE, Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. Signum developed the predecessor supplement to Nerium EHT ME Sports and defendant Signum promotes ME Sports for the same purposes in collaboration with Nerium marketing personnel. In marketing ME Sports and Nerium EHT, defendants capitalize on widespread concern about the growing prevalence of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and the lack of effective treatments. They also capitalize on growing awareness of the frequency and severity of concussions among football players and other athletes, and they recruit athletes to pitch the products to parents and coaches concerned about children's health. Defendants' claims about their supplements are unsupported, and as of April 2018, Nerium's total sales of EHT exceeded $120 million. Yeah, those are some serious medical claims that they were making. It was definitely a matter of time once they started that before someone actually did something about it. Because you can't say that a supplement prevents, reduces the risk of, or treats anything, especially not concussion, CTE, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. Just a month before the FTC went up against Niora, they had also filed a case against Advocare International, another MLM that focuses on health and wellness products. Under a settlement there, Advocare agreed to be banned from multi-level marketing and pay $150 million to consumers. So this goes to show how unstable those jobs can actually be because once the FTC actually has enough against them, the companies get shut down and you lose all source of income related to them. Because people still generally refer to Neora as Nerium, we'll call it Nerium in here too, the FTC's complaint says Nerium markets its products through a sales network of brand partners or BPs who it recruits with promises that they can earn life-changing income and gain financial pr freedom. And we know that that's not true, it, none of these MLMs actually provide that. I'm going to shift back to the actual lawsuit here to show what it said back in 2019 so you can see why they made this decision better than just the summarization that's in the article that I found about it. Nerium, also Neora, is an international multi-level marketing company that sells supplements, skin creams, and products using a network of brand partners. Since its inception, that's operated as an illegal pyramid scheme. Unlike a legitimate multi-level marketing business, Business, their compensation scheme emphasized recruitment over the sale of products to consumers outside of the organization. The business model makes it unlikely that a brand partner can earn money by selling the product to outside consumers. And here we go. So many people sit there saying that MLMs are not pyramid schemes because they have products. The FTC right here in a lawsuit stated that any illegal pyramid scheme, MLM, focuses on recruitment over the sale of products. If the MLM was legitimate, the bulk of the distributor's income would come from the sale of product. Just because they have product does not mean they cannot be a pyramid scheme and this is very clear here. In addition, uh, purchases made by brand partners and fees paid by brand partners have accounted for more than half of all of the company's revenues. So despite the promises that a partner can earn substantial income and gain financial freedom and independence, most brand partners make little to no money and a substantial percentage actually lose money. According to their most recent reporting, less than 5% of all brand partners in the United States earn more from nearing than what they pay in fees and product purchases. At least 92% of the brand partners quit and half leave the company within six months or less. I do like that more than half of those who sign up leave within six months or less because it shows that they're not quite as brainwashed as some of the other ones where they just keep trying and keep trying and losing more and more money. They seem to realize that they're losing money faster than some of the other ones and get out faster. Here you can see that Niara has actually made Made some changes from where they started before. As it says, to become a brand partner, consumers make substantial upfront investments in their products. They encourage consumers to purchase one of their success packs, also known as an enrollment pack, which costs $500, $750, or $1,000. Now they're $200, $550, and, and $1,150. So they don't have the $750 one anymore, or the instead it's $200, $550, and $1,150. So the one has actually gone up more to a higher amount than what their previous highest was before. 
and these are available at the time of enrollment. The packs contain motivational materials as well as several bottles of products and they advertise that it's a discount. So here they say it's a discount. They also say now it's still a 56% average discount and with all MLMs they tend to focus on that. And alternatively consumers can purchase a basic kit for $49.95. This has definitely changed so they had a basic kit with motivational and promotional materials only for $50 back in 2019 and now it's a $20 enrollment fee that you have to pay and then get your kits. So it's not really an improvement. Before they didn't have an enrollment fee, it was just buy one of your kit. They recommend you spend a lot of money on them, kind of like you hear Monat doing a lot now, to now with the enrollment fee and then the kit. And as it says here, they encourage the brand partners to purchase a pack, as mentioned earlier, and they have promotional videos for recruits that promote the packs as the best way to get your business moving fast. In the first month with Nerium, 70% of brand partners get either the $500 or the $1,000 purchase packs. I suspect that that's pretty much the same now because you either get a health or wellness at the $200, so they probably are going to be promoting the health, wellness, and hair care, which are the $550 and the $1,150 pack. In addition to the upfront investment in a pack, they also incentivize brand partners to commit to designated volumes of product purchases each. Each month. So right at the start they want you to do an auto ship. To be eligible for any compensation from them you must spend at least $80 dollars on auto delivery products or convince customers to spend a total of a $120 minimum on auto delivery product. That is a lot of money to be able to get any compensation from them. So you can go and spend a thousand dollars on your starter kit and never see any compensation through their business until you get a minimum of an $80 auto delivery on products to yourself or $120 to customers. The auto delivery is an open-ended commitment to pay for and receive product every month until it is canceled. The consumers who agree to these purchases through auto delivery are known as preferred customers. Historically, there was an exception through which brand partners could remain eligible to receive compensation if they spent or convinced retail customers to spend a combined $250 on products each month without the auto delivery commitment. Auto delivery orders are discounted at 25% or more from retail value of the product. In addition, auto delivery orders have above certain thresholds holds qualify for free shipping and other discounts. No discounts are offered for purchases made not through the auto delivery. And as you can see that even now they still have this program in place where they have it as the preferred customer rewards program. Imagine being rewarded to look, feel, and live better. Join Neora's preferred customer loyalty program through ordering through auto delivery to enjoy the benefits of 25% off their product. Get $35 off a product reward after every third order of over $135. So you have to place three orders of $135 or more to get $35 off a product. So that's $405 you have to spend before you get a $35 discount. You get free shipping on orders over $200, so they really want to push that, and chances are their shipping's probably going to be quite high anyways. In which case, if you go with the $200 minimum, you're then spending a minimum of $600 before you can get the $35 off product reward, because it has to be on, on every third order over that price. And then you get $13 off product rewards for every customer referral who has an order of $70 or more. And here you can see that they definitely discouraged the inventory loading back in 2019 that they still have on their website now where, where they tell you to focus on just getting customers to your website. And according to the lawsuit, there was two different forms of compensation. You could sell products directly from them and rewards for recruiting new brand partners. Brand partners did not receive compensation for Nerium sales from their personal inventory, but they retain any profit from the products they're able to sell out of their own inventory. The most the brand partners can earn through such sales is the difference between the price consumers pay and the price that they paid. Brand partners who do not sign up for auto delivery receive no discount on their product purchases, meaning that sales from their personal inventory would not be profitable even at full retail price. 
Even for BPs who sign up for auto delivery, this profit margin is very slim or non-existent. So this just goes to show again that despite the fact that they want you to go and spend so much money on the larger product packs, which contain a lot more in them, you're not going to make anything from them. You can order products yourself for that whole $250 one to try and get some compensation instead of doing the auto delivery. However, you're not going to make any money from it because if you don't do the auto delivery, you don't get a discount on the products and therefore you make pretty much no profit at all. Most of Nerium products are shipped directly from Nerium to the customers. The brand partners can sell directly from Nerium either to retail customers who make one-time purchases of products or to preferred customers who agree to receive recurring monthly auto delivery of products. The majority of the compensation paid by Nerium for the sales ended up being paid to the brand partner's upline rather than the brand partner who made the sale. So that's really cutting into what they get. No wonder so many leave within six months because you yourself as a brand partner could go and get someone signed up on auto shipping, but instead of you getting paid any of the for any of the sales and commission, it goes straight to your upline. Your upline gets everything that was made by you. I do hope that they change that for the sake of those who are still in Niora because that has to be one of the worst compensation things I have ever seen. And then according to Nerium, less than 1% of all rewards paid by the company consist of commissions paid off the sales. Therefore, more than 99% of rewards paid by Niora to the brand partners was through recruitment. More than 99% of what the brand partners made went through their recruiting. And it's difficult for them to make any type of product sales because consumers are often able to purchase the products from other sources such as Amazon for as little as or less than the best price the brand partner can offer to the consumer. Which really begs the question of why do people even bother to sign up? They have their products on Amazon for less than what the brand partner can sell them for to the customer. And the customer doesn't have to worry about being pressured into an auto shipment. They can completely bypass the brand partners. So why even bother joining? Clearly you're not going to make any money in the company if you have to recruit people to get anything. And even then you don't get any kind of compensation unless you have recurring auto shipments for yourself or for a customer. So, and just checking this out, you can see here that even today, Niora is sold on Amazon. I went on to Facebook Marketplace here just to show what kind of results you get when you search Niora. And there's quite a few really. And a lot of them are all the same. They use just before and after pics and they put in just one, two, three, four as random pricing and don't actually show what the prices are gonna be. Some of these are local. Some of these show up as locations as far as like an eight hour drive from where I live and you can clearly see on some that filters are being used like this one here for example if you look at this you can tell that it's been blurred out and that there's a clear filter and then you have these packages that you can buy and the prices of them like wow really who would want to pay $195 for a four-piece hair system or $255 for a four-piece skin system and these are 40% off the skin and 36% percent off the hair. Regularly it's 307 for the hair and 432 for the skin. I know personally I would never pay that much. I thought Dermalogica skin products were expensive but damn this is so much worse. And when it comes to hair products like when I want to go and get the really good stuff well at least what works really well for me I wait till the liters go on sale below $30 and those look like much smaller bottles for a lot more money. Right now they have a lot of Mother's Day products promotions going on obviously with Mother's Day being this Sunday but it's like what are the gotta have gifts from the glam mom give her the gift of radiant skin and hair and save plus a free dream away sleep kit plus exist man they did not edit this first existing preferred customers and brand partners get free shipping so you have a smoothest hair ever set with a shampoo conditioner hair mask or a flawless face set with a night cream a moisture boost and hydrogel packages Mother's Day sets have some fine print on the bottom of this. It says the Dream Away Sleep Kit includes an eye mask, headband, and scrunchie in a silky pouch. It's a $37 value just for that. That's expensive, even if you were to get those regularly. For new preferred
preferred customers to receive free shipping. Auto delivery must be a $190 Canadian minimum, which is less than what the website says it has to be a $200 minimum to do that. And existing preferred customers and brand partners can purchase the set through dedicated Mother's Day shopping carts offers only while supplies last. So if you want the pricing, you want the free ship, you have to get auto delivery. But who's going to want auto delivery of this, especially when it has to be $190? each time. That is far too much money. Now to get back to the article about the lawsuit here. Apparently, Niora also charges the brand partners numerous different fees, including sales aids, business cards, letterhead, registration for conferences, access to the software app. So all of that you have to pay out of your own pocket. And in the end, according to their own reports, more than 90% of brand partners in the US earn less than what they pay in product purchases and fees. That's pretty bad. So not only are they getting you on the enrollment fees, the starter sets, the products, they also charge you for business cards, letterheads, sales aids, registration, and even its own software apps. And this part gets into what we went over earlier about the EHT and how they try and claim that it can cure all sorts of stuff when it really can't. And They've at least changed it now to say it can help support certain functions and not cure anything. And according to the complaint, it's illegal to advertise that a product can prevent, treat, or cure disease unless you have competent and reliable scientific evidence that supports your claim, which clearly they did not have. For claims about Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, CTE, and other serious conditions, that means well-controlled human clinical studies. And according to the complaint, there are no human clinical trials supporting Miriam's claims about EHT. Now, before we move into what people said about it, here's the last little bit of that article. As this established truth and advertising standards apply to all companies within the FTC's jurisdiction, including MLMs. Every MLM case the FTC has brought to date has alleged, among other things, misleading money-making representations. The facts bear out that very few MLM participants earn more than a small amount of supplemental income. That's why it's unwise for MLMs to make earnings claims expressly or by implication that don't reflect typical participants' achievements. False or unsubstantiated earnings and lifestyle claims violate the FTC Act, something that everyone in an MLM needs to look at. By stating that they make certain amounts of money or they have a certain lifestyle, anything like that goes against the FTC and therefore these people can be reported to the FTC for this and to their own companies for non-compliance. For entrepreneurs, it's wise to view business opportunity pitches with a skeptical eye. This applies especially if the person making the promises stands to make money from your participation. Any business that has an upline and downline like an MLM, your upline will make money off of you, so you need to keep an eye out for that. Before investing, run it by someone with proven business savvy who isn't trying to sell you something. Again, they always try to create FOMO, so fear of missing out, and they want to discourage you from looking into the company or talking to anyone before joining. They want you to join right away without actually thinking about it, because if you go and look into it ahead of time, you're going to realize it's not a company you want to join, and they're going to miss out on earning money off of you. The FTC has specific advice on multi-level marketing, including tips for spotting an illegal pyramid scheme. One possible tip-off, if the promoter's focus is less on selling the product and more on recruiting new members, think about heading to the nearest exit. And even to date, Niora's website is all about promoting new people, new brand partners, not about learning about the products, selling the products, all about, hey, here's this lifestyle, join us and be one of us, which is something that the FTC even says, and anyone else who's in this, stay away from it, don't get caught up in that. So here's some of what people have said about it. One person said, I got took two, invested over $790, went to brand partner meeting, sold over 11,000 and never got a dime when it came. Time to get paid, I got no help. The guy that signed me up moved to Florida overnight and his boss sponsor, whatever, had no time for. I gave up and could not stop auto shipping showing up and draining my bank account. So he had the auto shipping, which meant he was eligible for the compensation. But if he sold over $11,000 in products and never got anything, then it is clear that it definitely went to their upline, which was one of the big complaints about it. And in terms of the lawsuit was that the brand partners themselves don't make money off the sales they make. It's their upline that makes money off the sales they make. And he had auto shipping. 
and the fact that it still kept draining his bank account and he could not stop it is very suspicious. That's when you need to go and have the bank look into it and force a stop to these to block anything by that company, which they can do now. I've actually had to have that happen before. Well, my husband has anyways. And like it shows here, he just kept losing more and more money and the guy who brought him in just up and left. And the guy's upline just was like, well, to hell with you, I'm not even gonna deal with you. And someone else here, what should I do if I was a brand partner for Niora who experienced financial loss described in the complaint? Are there resources available? Will this suit become class action? And someone else also wanted to be involved in a class action lawsuit as they were also a brand partner. Another comment, someone I know was asked by a recruiter to join this illegal scheme and the known individual was reluctant to provide a social security number to the recruiter. The recruiter then just said, just give me a social security number and scramble the last two digits. Fraud at its finest. No kidding, that is fraud. So chances are they wanted the social security number to join in and to get the auto shipping done. As you see with a lot of the companies, they want that number before you can become brand partner. And then for the recruiter, just to say, well, just give me a number and scramble the last two digits. That is suspicious. Now, I like that the FTC staff here replied saying that you can report that to the complaint and the information you give will go into a secure database that the FTC and other law enforcement agencies will use it for investigations as that definitely needs to be in this thing for sure. Another person was encouraged to buy the most expensive kit, which was $1,000 at the time and now is $1,150. I think it was. Either way, it's more expensive now than it was back then. And to open and use the products. They did. They were told they had 30 days to return the kit for a full refund if they changed their mind. It's false. The kits can only be returned if unopened and only at a maximum 90% refund. I opened and started using and even letting potential customers sample the products as advised. So even though I could not attract people to buy or join, I'm stuck with the products because I was encouraged to open them and make them non-returnable. I'm out $1,200 with nothing to show for it. Another person here, in reviewing the compensation plan, there are many titles you can promote to. You start as brand partner, the first promotion is senior brand partner. How However, you cannot achieve that and start earning those bonuses without recruiting. You must bring one person to the business to advance. From there, you must bring two more and so on. This is under the new New York compensation plan. There's another person who wanted to add a complaint to the lawsuit. They had a huge story to share. I really would like to know what their story is if they post it like that. And other people have said that, yeah, everything in there is true and they're having trouble finding a link to be included as they were brand part partners who lost money. Well, now after looking at those, I have to go and look up other items now just to see what changed now, like the compensation plan, the return policy, and the income disclosure statement. Neora actually does not have an income disclosure statement. All they do say is that Neora Canada ULC does not guarantee any level of income for a brand partner. The actual income of a Neora brand partners varies depending on each brand partner's skill, effort, and time commitment. From February, 2019 to January 2020, 30.6% of active U.S. brand partners earned cash commissions and 69.4% did not earn any cash commissions. The average annual gross earnings of an active U.S. brand partner was 1054 so the average across everyone was $1,054 and only 30.6% of their active brand partners earned a commission. 69.4% of active brand partners did not earn any commissions. So again, anyone looking into companies like these always look for information like this. This is directly off their website itself. They write up front state that almost 70% of people in the company don't even earn a commission. So again, why would you want to join a company where you have a 70% chance of not even making a penny? All you will do is lose money, especially since they pretty much demand that you have something on auto shipment. And it has to be so much money in order to get anywhere. And now further returns and cancellations 
policy and see if anything has changed since 2019. So they have a 30 day money back satisfaction guarantee to all retail customers. If the customer is dissatisfied with any product for any reason, it may be returned in its original packaging along with the original invoice to Neora within 30 days of purchase for a refund of the purchase price. If the product was purchased directly from a brand partner, the refund must be processed by the brand partner. The product must be returned along with the original invoice to the brand partner who will refund the product purchase price. The brand partner will then return the product to Neora for a replacement product. If the product was purchased directly from Neora using the brand partner's website or brand partner ID number, the refund will be processed by Neora. So here again, they're discouraging their brand partners from actually purchasing and selling by any means other than the website. Neora agrees to repurchase from the re-signing or terminating brand partner all unencumbered products, sales aids, enrollment packs, and subscriptions purchased by the individual from the company within the previous 30 days or longer where it's required by law, which are unused, unopened, and in commercially resellable condition for not less than 90% of the actual amount paid for the products and sales aids which are being returned. Any and all commissions and bonuses previously paid out on such a sale will be retracted and the return deducted from your refund. So if you're a customer, you can get refund on the product, but if you're a brand partner and you're wanting to leave, you're wanting to get a refund, you can only do so if everything is unopened, unused, and they can just go and resell it once you return it to them. But you only get 90% of that money back. And if you did earn any commission or bonuses from those products, that gets taken from your refund. Meaning they're gonna do everything they can to make sure you get the lowest amount possible back. In order to facilitate the return process by Neora, the brand partner or customer will be required to obtain a return pre-authorization number. This number must be written on the outside of the shipping box. If a package is returned without this number, the package may re be refused or the refund delayed. To get the pre-authorization number, you have to send in a return request form to their support department. You can scan or email it to that email or fax number. And if you have any questions regarding the process, contact support department by phone during normal business hours. So they make it intentionally difficult to do a refund. And then you have cancellations are monthly auto delivery orders and monthly subscriptions for the advanced business center may be canceled at any time by submitting a written notice five days prior to the next scheduled shipping date. To cancel an auto delivery order or monthly subscription, submit a completed auto delivery monthly subscription cancellation form via email to that email or the fax number. I came across the Niara policies and procedures manual which does include retail customer refunds on it and it states that here the product should be returned to the company by the brand partner who purchased it from the company within 60 days of the original date of purchase so a brand partner shall obtain a return authorization number from the company customer service department within 10 days of the return date to the brand partner and prior to returning any product the product shall be received by the company within 20 days of the return date to the brand partner and shall be accompanied by a signed statement from the customer identifying the reason for the return, a copy of the original sales receipt, unused portion of the product returned in its original container, name, address, and phone number of the customer, signed statement from the customer identifying the reason for return. Okay, why does that have to be on there twice? A copy of the original sales receipt. Uh, again, why is that on there twice? And the unused portion again, the name, address, phone number again. I don't think they properly edited this if they had all of that twice. Proper shipping cartons and packaging material shall be used in the packaging of the product. Brand partner will pay the cost of the shipping for the product and the company will replace it but will not refund to any brand partner the purchase price of any retail customer returns. Huh. So the company will just replace anything, but the brand partner themselves do not get a refund on it. All they can get is a replacement. And here's a better, more detailed thing in terms of the brand partner returns. A brand partner who terminates their business relationship has the right to return the purchase on commercially reasonable terms, currently marketable inventory, including 
including company-produced promotional materials, sales tools, and kits in possession of the brand partner purchased by the brand partner for resale prior to the date of termination, which, as they've stated elsewhere, the brand partner doesn't need to grab anything for resale, so it's odd that that's the, what they state is that they want it only stuff that was meant for that. For business purposes hereof, reasonable commercial terms shall mean the repurchase of marketable inventory within 12 months of the brand partner's date of purchase at not less than 90% of the original net cost, less the appropriate set-offs and legal claims, if any. In addition, for purposes of this section, products shall not be considered currently marketable if returned for repurchase after the product's commercially reasonable usable or shelf life period has passed. Shelf life will be deemed to have passed if the product package has been opened, nor shall products be considered currently marketable if the company clearly discloses to the brand partner prior to purchase that the products are seasonable discontinued or special promotional items, and are not subject to repurchase obligation. The company will not issue a refund nor replace any product previously certified as having been sold under the 70% rule. No refunds will be issued unless a brand partner is in strict compliance with the procedures contained herein. A written return request shall be submitted stating the reason for the termination, the reason for the return of product and or sales material and accompanied by original proof of payment and a copy of a purchase order form or packing slip. Product return without prior authorization will be returned to the brand partner. The company will provide the brand partner with a return authorization number and will instruct the brand partner where to ship the product for inventory verification. Upon receipt and inspection of the return, the company will process the appropriate refund payment and a brand partner shall pay the cost of the return freight. Yeah, Monate anyone? All commissions, overrides, and bonuses paid to a terminated brand partner as a result of any product returned upon termination shall be repaid to the company. The company may deduct such amounts from any commissions or other amounts owed to such brand partner. All commissions, overrides, and or bonuses paid to the brand partner's upline on a return product shall be repaid to the company by the upline brand partner. Oh, that one's bad. So if a brand partner is returning product, which they already got commissions, overrides, or bonuses for that said product. Not only does the brand partner have to repay it to the company, but so does their upline. Yeah, I can really see why uplines would try and hide anything to do with returns if, well, they don't want to have to pay back any commissions that they earned from the product, never mind what any of their downline earned. That is brutal. What company does that? Well, I guess apparently this one, but still. Could you imagine if one day you open up your email and you have something stating, hey, such and such downline of yours has terminated their contract with us and has returned this product, which you earned a commission on them obtaining it. Please pay us this amount for that commission. So where we saw that case of the one brand partner that was upset that their upline told them to open and try everything knowing that they actually wouldn't be able to return it. This is why they did that. The upline did not want to have to pay any of those commissions back that they earned off that purchase. They wanted to make sure that they were going to keep that money and if anything in here didn't already tell you that this was a scam, this part better tell you that. Alright, for the compensation plan, which was a bit difficult to find the actual one, I did find some articles on it, but, and eventually a document, which I will show in here, but I want to go over what it says in the lawsuit first. We did look at some of the elements of the compensation plan listed on the lawsuit back in the part about the income claims, so some of the ones that I want to go over here are more to do with the recruiting aspect, whereas Nerium identifies the immediate focus for new brand partners, the goal is for fast start qualifying in their first month. Until recently, uh, brand partners could fast start qualify in one of two ways. Recruit three new brand partners, generating 2,000 QV, including 500 PQV, from the recruiter, and meeting certain other requirements. 
The other requirements include enrolling nine preferred customers generating 1,000 ADV and meeting other certain requirements. The recruiting option paid bonus of $150 while sales is only $75. So it shows that you do get more if you recruit versus sell because your bonus is double on the recruiting part. The sales option was difficult to achieve. Less than half of Nerium brand partners are able to successfully sign up even one preferred customer in their entire career with Nerium, let alone nine in their first month. The most recent version of the compensation plan completely eliminates the sales option. So as of the time of the lawsuit, they had updated it to have only recruitment for your fast start, no longer sales. So if that doesn't scream pyramid scheme to you, what does? <laughs> Any rewards available increase as the brand partner ascends in rank and in the organization. To advance to a higher rank, you must recruit more brand partners. Brand partners are generally also required to satisfy increasingly higher monthly targets for downline volume. That is activity by their recruits to reach higher rate. They offer a lifestyle bonus of $100,000 per month to participants who ascend to the 18th rank Gold International Marketing Director. Certain rewards are only available to higher ranks in the organization, such as team commissions are only open to participants who have reached certain minimum ranks. Approximately one third of all Nerium rewards are paid in the form of team commissions, which are based primarily on product purchases by the recruits in one's downline. They offer commissions for the sale of products at rates of five to 15%, but the actual commissions paid out can be significant lower. This is because commissions on the sale of products are earned only when the brand partner's QV exceeds 300 a month. Until recently, commissions were only paid on sales above Above the monthly QV threshold, making the actual commission rate much less. Like many other MLMs out there, uh, Niara also has a car program for them. It's a Lexus, and in certain countries outside of the US, it's an Audi. And as the lawsuit says here, less than 2% of brand partners ever reach the rank now called elite director at that point, required to become eligible for this. And as per usual, they do not purchase the Lexus for anybody. They merely provide a $500 monthly check to be used towards a Lexus lease. Although the brand partners must maintain the elite director rank to continue to qualify for the $500 monthly bonus, a brand partner remains liable for the monthly lease payments on the Lexus even if they do not receive a monthly bonus. Alternatively, Nerium recently began to offer elite directors the option of receiving a $375 cash bonus in lieu of the Lexus bonus. So if you don't want the car, you can have a bonus as well, but it's much smaller. But since a lot of them probably aren't able to actually get that car. At least they have something. They're not completely missing out on that bonus. All right. The challenging reality of retailing and recruiting has meant that very few in your ever get above the first rung in the ladder. So there are 18 levels in Niora, but more than 85% never even make it to that second rank. While the overwhelming share of the rewards accrues to few individuals who actually do reach the top. And in fact, Nerium charges its brand partners various fees, which typically are far greater than any compensation they pay to the brand partners. In particular, brand partners have to pay out of their own pockets for fees for sale aids, business cards, letterhead, and registration at multiple conferences, including the annual multi-day Get Real conference. In addition, they charged its partners $30 a month for access to the Nerium Edge back office platform, which allows them access to the mobile app, which that app is the exclusive source for most of the training and promotional aids, as well as all the information regarding their customers. So they have to get that app basically if they want the information in, in regards to their customers. Due to these numerous fees, according to Nerium's most recent data, more than 95% of brand partners paid more to Nerium each month than they earned in commissions and bonuses. So you have 70% do not see a commission 
and 95% pay the company more than what they actually earn. Even amongst only the active BPs, Nerium itself reports an average annual earnings of $65. These earnings are gross, net to not net. The meager sum does not take into account the significant amount most BPs are forced to pay for unwanted products to remain active. The change now is that they say it's over $1,000 a year, whereas here it was $65. So what are the chances that actually went up that much since the lawsuit. So that makes their income disclosure, which isn't really an income disclosure, even harder to believe. Despite promises of financial independence and six-figure incomes, less than 1% of active partners averaged earnings of $530 a month, and even fewer than that got $6,400 a month. And the smaller-than-promised potential incomes described above do not account for the significant outlays of time and money that they're forced to incur just to maintain their business, including traveling around the country to conferences and meetings, organizing their own sales events, and since they're not classified as employees but independent contractors, they're responsible for paying self-employment taxes and for their own health insurance and other job-related benefits. When you go further into the lawsuit, there's more about the deceptive product claims, as it says, and it was back as far as 2014 that Niora started to make unsupported health claims about the products containing EHT, and those two products are ME Sports and Nerium EHT. Although Signum developed the EHT, Nerium defendants collaborated with Signum in marketing. Defendants have claimed that EHT is scientifically proven to offer users significant health benefits. For example, Nerium has claimed that there is scientific proof that EHT is effective and has cited studies at Signum and, and several other universities that they were published in peer-reviewed journals. All of the cited studies, however, involved rodents and not humans, which, as we know, you need human trials in order to know how it's going to work on humans. You start with the rodents and then you move to humans. And they falsely implied that Princeton University was involved in its development. If you look on their website, they still have all sorts of stuff saying, we are in all of these journals, and it's probably just the paid ads that they put in them. Well, magazines. They have also claimed that Signum succeeded in developing medical breakthroughs related to Alzheimer and Parkinson's, where actual pharmaceutical manufacturers have failed. And after developing EHT, Signum approached several pharmaceutical companies about distributing it but the companies insisted that human clinical trials be conducted to determine what claims could be lawfully made in its marketing. Signum initially planned to proceed with the clinical testing, but ultimately rejected the approach as it was too costly. And you see, the pharmaceutical companies have it right. You need the human clinical trials to know exactly how it's going to work on a human. Instead, they planned for Neora's network of hundreds of thousands of brand partners who were incentivized to recruit others to the scheme and generally had had no scientific background to distribute the products and spread its claims by word of mouth. So basically, how to get your product out there with false claims. Hmm, you find some gullible people and tell them, hey, tell everybody it does this stuff, even though we don't know what it actually does because it's not tested. In February 2015, as part of a joint marketing effort with Nerium, Signum issued a press release from New Jersey headquarters of claiming that EHT may be a significant contributor to reduced risk for consequences of inflammation and neurodegenerative disease. They explained that it provides these benefits because it protects and strengthens neuronal structures by preventing damage to tau an essential brain protein. To buttress this claim, Signum asserted that EHT was discovered in partnership between Princeton University and Signum Biosciences. As it was already mentioned, Princeton University had nothing to do with this. The press release advertised Signum's product, stating currently the ingredient can be found exclusively in ME Sports. And at the time, back in 2015, when there was the collaboration, but before the launch of Nerium EHT, Signum marketed, sold, and distributed ME Sports in a dietary supplement containing it as the primary ingredient for $60 for 30 tablets. And no doubt that's going to be at least one tablet a day as most of these like to do. So you're paying $60 a month for something that's completely unfounded and we have no idea how it actually responds to humans. Oh, here's something fun to add. Nyora actually 
use the rodent studies to try and get people to explain why this stuff works, making their deceptive claims. So an example is that if someone asks, so how do you know if EHT works on humans if you've not tested it on humans? The response describes how the commonality between human and animal genes means positive results in these models provides compelling evidence that EHT will be able to modulate those same key conserved signaling proteins in humans. Man, this is so unethical, seriously. Not everything that works on rats actually ends up working on humans. So you can't go and say, well, everything's so close and the evidence suggests that it may work on humans because it works on the animals. No, it doesn't work like that. It can react completely differently to us than what it does to them or have significantly reduced results in humans as compared to the animals. <laughs> in a conference announcing EHT launch, immediately after Signum representative gave a brief presentation about EHT, the defendant told thousands of brand partners at a conference a lot of things you can't say we'll talk about later on because all of those things you can't say it does. Yeah, that's not suspicious at all, is it? Not surprisingly, Neora brand partners partners began almost immediately publicizing EHT as a cure for neurodegenerative disease. And within two weeks of the conference, which announced its launch, Signum's director notified Nerium about statements being made by the brand partners about EHT that were compiled on a third-party website that evaluates dietary supplement claims. The website cited Nerium's claims that EHT will reduce the chances of developing neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, and despite knowing the claims that they were making, they still encouraged people to continue making them. The website included information on the EHT studies on rodents, relating to our Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other neurodegenerative disorders, but did not make it clear, nor does it still, that studies are insufficient to substantiate the efficacy in humans. I'm just going to leave this part about the EHT here. I could easily do a whole video on this. Like, they've got pages upon pages in the lawsuit alone about the claims that were made and how that they used ex-NFL players and everything to promote their products and all that. They even tried using boxers and other athletes as well. After the initial lawsuit went out, Nyora actually tried to countersue the FTC, which was thankfully dismissed, but they did manage to take it from their New Jersey office to Texas and have everything all there. Like a month and a half after the initial lawsuit in November of 2019, in December of 2019, the FTC responded to the countersuit from Nyora, arguing that their lawsuit just seeks to use the courts to sidestep a federal regulatory action against a company for being a potential pyramid scheme. Whereas the founder of Neora wants a declaration stating that it's not a pyramid scheme and to bar the FTC from pursuing a civil administrative enforcement proceeding against companies like Neora, which they claim are legal under state laws. But as we know, the FTC needs some serious evidence to be able to bring any of these companies up on trial. So they may not be brought down immediately because it takes time to get the evidence needed. The FTC stated that Niara can't invoke the Declaratory Judgment Act because the law only applies when the complaint is predicated on a different statute. That leaves the Administrative Procedure Act, and since the complaint is more a general manifesto against the FTC than an attack on any specific and much less final agency action, according to the filing, the, the proper protocol is for Niara's complaint to be dismissed. The FTC argued that Neora wouldn't suffer any hardship of its complaint being dismissed because it can still raise defenses to the FTC's enforcement action in New Jersey. Declaratory relief wouldn't resolve anything because the FTC's lawsuit alleges misconduct outside Neora's motion to dismiss, such as allegations of false earnings, claims, and false health and false establishment claims. In another article from September 1st, 2020, it looks like Illinois has dismissed Neora's declaratory judgment suit against the FTC on jurisdictional grounds. So almost a year later, Neora is still fighting it. 
and this is less than a year ago now. The court granted the FTC's motion to dismiss that one, finding that the claims present are not ripe for judicial resolution and the plaintiffs can defend themselves in an enforcement action that remains ongoing in Texas. For Niora, the battle still is going on as the court has emphasized that the plaintiffs undoubtedly have an adequate remedy in the pending enforcement action because they can raise the same arguments they assert here as defenses in that action and that it case was recently transferred from New Jersey to North District of Texas where it remains pending. I've tried looking into anything about if the lawsuit's been settled yet or what's happened and I haven't found anything that's dated since October 1st of 2020 which is after the last one that I mentioned and it just says that their dismissal in Illinois allows them to fight in their preferred venue of Texas. The federal judge dismissed the lawsuit by Nyora where the company asked for a ruling against the FTC for trying to enact a pyramid scheme law that doesn't exist, Niora claimed that the act was outside the FTC's statutory authority. The ruling effectively ends an attempt by Niora to sue the FTC in Illinois, which is part of the only appeal circuit in the country that has previously sided with the FTC's authority to seek monetary relief. So the case was initially filed in New Jersey. Niora strategically opted to file its counterclaim in Illinois. That's where the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeal Appeals only has appellate jurisdiction and that's the same appeals court that handed the FTC a huge loss in 2019 when it removed the agency's ability to claim restitution for victims in potentially precedent-setting case. So that would be why they went there, because they're hoping that that would work out in their favor. Now, both the FTC's complaint against Niora and any responsive actions the company plans to bring will be merged together as part of the same case handled by the federal judge in North Texas. And it was back in July of 2020 that a federal judge in New Jersey ruled that the FTC's lawsuit would be transferred to a courthouse in Texas, where they're based. So it looks like at least Signum and part of the manufacturing process for EHT takes place in New Jersey, which was mentioned earlier, but Niora is based out of Texas, so that's where they're trying to get everything done. So it looks like even at this point, we're still going to have to wait a little bit longer to see how everything comes to a head, since we are now months out of it, and it doesn't look like there's really been anything new, but like it did go months at a time without anything in the last year and a half as well. So with the anticlimactic end to that case, because there's still nothing decided, we can look into what Niora is trying to claim. So Niora's lawsuit corrections, as they claim, is that the FBI FTC has launched an unfounded attack on the direct selling industry, where they're trying to change the way direct sales companies can operate without going through the proper legislative process and formal rulemaking. Direct sales companies are illegal under every state and federal law, not to mention direct sales industry plays a significant role in the American economy. Yeah, okay. It makes people spend money by causing the distributors to spend money on products in order to gain rank, but you also have to build a downline, in which case, as a part of the direct selling industry, that part should not be there. You should not get more money from building a downline than from selling products. The focus should be on products. If the focus was all on products, that would be a completely different story. Niora is in the business of making people better and changing lives through products and opportunities. They state right up on their website that almost 70% did not receive a commission, and it's over 80% don't even make enough money to cover Niora's fees. They've also got the most ridiculous compensation plan and returns policy I've ever seen. Niora rejected an offer from the FTC to settle a threatened lawsuit and moreover stepped up to file suit challenging their ability to retroactively change a law without proper authority. From day one, Niora was designed to comply with the FTC's direct sales business guidance. You may claim that, but you went out and intentionally developed a product and made unfounded claims for it while working working with a company who refuses to do human trials on said product. And then on 
top of that, the FTC even says that more income should be coming from the product. The commissions and everything paid out to distributors and brand partners should come from the sale of product. And you even look on your website and everything is focused on recruitment. It's recruit, recruit, recruit. And that, from everything I've seen, is not in compliance. Niora has always had a method for customers to purchase product and become preferred customers separate from its brand partner enrollment and shopping experience. You have that, yes, but you have to get auto ship in order to become a preferred customer. And on top of that, you have to spend $200 a month for free shipping on it. Who is going to spend $200 a month on your product? And then if the you want commissions to go to any of the brand partners, Niora's focused primarily on customer acquisition. 2017, roughly nine new customers were enrolled for every new brand partner in the US. That is false. As it said in the lawsuit, almost no brand partners got one preferred customer. Never mind nine preferred customers or new customers per brand partner. The brand partners do not need to make personal purchases aside from a $49 enrollment kit in order to qualify for commissions. Actually, it is straight up stated that if you want to qualify for commissions, you must have a minimum $80 auto ship every month. Without that, you're not qualified. So they're straight up lying here again. And here it says you have a $49 enrollment kit, but you look under anything to do with the enrollment, you have a $20 enrollment fee, and then all of the kits start at $200. They even have a little infographic here about how 51% of commissions paid should be based on product sales to the users, and they say that 77% of commissions paid are based on product sales. Well, if you look through their stuff, yes, a lot of their commissions are based on product sales, but the customer must make a $300 dollar monthly purchase for the brand partner to get a 5% commission. So you know that the commissions are almost nothing and that the brand partners are making next to nothing. There's no inventory loading, which is true. They very much discourage inventory loading. A majority or 51% of sales should be to non-participants and customers. The majority of commissions should not depend on recruiting. Well, most of your commissions do come through recruiting. Only 4% of sales in 2017 were enrollment packed, and it was something like 1% of commissions came from product, as was in the lawsuit. So you can't really say that the majority of commissions are that way. If you look at it in the sense that they get commissions based on the stuff that is sold, it's a very low commission amount, much lower than some other MLMs, which means that brand partners are making next to nothing and a lot of their earnings come from the generational commission. And there's no payment for just recruiting, but you get a lot of bonuses for how far up you get in the system, and you need to recruit in order to get those bonuses. Those bonuses are essentially payment for recruiting. Now let's move into what some of the hunts were doing online from the anti-MLM subreddit. Some of these are older images, some are newer, and you'll be able to tell which because there's one where they actually have a Nerium product when it's Niora now. Niora Hun takes the worst pics. Notice how she pulled up the pants to look skinnier? There's at least six inches difference in the width between the bra and the pants. Their new weight loss crap is a joke. And yeah, you can tell she pulled the bra down and made sure to hide her love handles inside the pants. In the front, she tried to make it look similar, but you can tell she's standing up straighter. She's not slouching and the pants are way up in the back. Mom's best friend using Niora as a tax write-off. <laughs> and of course, used the wrong form of write on the post. So good luck. Unsure of the legality of all that. Total win-win. What if your skincare was a tax write-off and you got paid to use it? Mine is. Ask me about about it. Yeah, no, no, it's not. Never mind the fact that you're a 1099 employee, therefore it's not. Niora, the new Nerium. I roll. I did it. Hands up. I said Y-E-S to a side gig with hashtag Niora for star bow two bow star reason. It actually works. I wanted to earn free products. Who know my first month would more than money exceed money. My
my expectations. Follow my Facebook page, Niara, with blank independent brand partner to learn more and win free stuff. Give yourself permission to say yes to, to interesting side jobs, gigs, projects, and part. I'm guessing part-time income or something. I don't know. It's cut off there. My cousin is a Niora rep. I feel like this is our slash self werewolf situation. I bet these bank tellers secretly look at our bank accounts and wonder how the heck is this person surviving? Wondering emoji. And yeah, I bet they do. From what we saw earlier, 70% of brand partners don't even earn a commission. They make absolutely nothing or lose money. So yeah, the bank or bank tellers are probably going, how is this person making any money? How are they surviving? They clearly have no money coming in. No way I'm falling for this. She sells Niora and Prolux, which actually are the same company and is otherwise well-educated person with a high-level degree. Thirsty Thursday tonight. Salsa dancers, who would like to know how to make the best lemon drop martini glass lemon? Raise your hands. Hands up. Someone in the comments raised hand. Woohoo! I'll message you the invite. Yeah, I have to agree. I'm not gonna fall for that. It's going to be a Niora pitch for sure. This one's a good one. Niora weight loss surgery definitely had nothing to do with it. One year of bathing in Niora's firming cream. Oh yeah, firming cream is gonna do that. That is a lot of weight loss and definitely some surgery there. I heart testimonies like these pointing down. Check out these results from a friend pointing down. Zero weight loss, only firm cream, exclamation mark. She did have weight loss surgery, but that was two years before she ever learned of our magic lotion. The first pick is before starting the firm cream, but two years after the weight loss surgery, the second one is 30 days, third is 90 days, and the fourth pick on the right is one full year of bathing in it. There is nothing like it. Hands up. Order it this month and get a discount next month. Message me. We will sell out soon. Bathing suit. Hard eyes. Yeah, that is um, excess skin removal surgery, tummy tuck type situation. Definitely not a firming cream for that. And here's the one I mentioned earlier from two years ago. Nerium rebranding is Neora, but the Hunts are mixing up the new name and old product in the photos. Blue Heart, I love sharing Neora. Question mark, can you guess how many eggs are in this cup? Question mark, like this post, take two friends, leave your guess and you're entered. Top three closest will be entered to win a Neora product. Gasping emoji. Let the guessing begin, exclamation mark. Thank you all for watching and being amazing Neora preferred customers blue heart guess how many eggs like and take two friends to enter and there you go right underneath the cup filled with eggs you see a Nerium product so they definitely did not put the right product here because it's the old brand name for them where this video was intended to be like three little mini dives or just checking out three companies ruby ribbon forever living in Neora it wound up being a Neora deep dive the more I looked into this, the further and further down a rabbit hole of nightmares I fell. It was just one thing after another and it kept going on and on and on. Hopefully you like this. Hopefully it shows some good information that will help people make a more informed choice. Let me know what you think. But say something in the comments below if you even watched anywhere near this whole thing. I can't believe how long this ended up being. But yeah, I'll try and keep the forever living and the ruby ribbon ones a little bit bit shorter. I haven't found as much on them as I did with Neora, previously Neorum. So, well, as this is getting to be an awkward outro, have a good rest of your day and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!